pleases you. And if you find that you're self-stinted and that you have uh, failed to keep that covenant of the condition and you broke your, your promise in, in being vigilant about this, you have to punish yourself. You have to do something that takes the self to account. I'll give you an example. Ibn Wahb bin, one of the great commenters and muhaddithin, he was a great Maliki scholar as well. He said that he was having trouble controlling his tongue. So he decided that he would make an oath in the, mo in the morning if he, if he back bit anybody that he would fast the next day. So that's mu'aqaba. So the covenant, the musharata, I'm not going to backbite. And then he watched himself during the day. If, if he did, he would fast the next day. He said it got to the point where he was fasting all the time and it was be being more difficult. This is a real story. So he decided to change the mu'aqaba, you know, the, the penalty. And he did it that he would give a dinar, which is a lot of money. It's probably about $100. So he said he'll give sadaqa of the dinar, the gold. And so he would do that, and he said his love of money eliminated his backbiting. Because fasting was easy for him, but money, giving up money was harder. So that's what he did. To, to, so, you know, you have many stories like that, but the point is they were really serious about implementing these things. And this is one of the things about us as a modern Muslim community. We read all this stuff. We, we, you know, we read the Qur'an, we see all these injunctions, we see all these... But people aren't on an active path to really try to implement these things. And, but this is the purpose of your life. It's, it's to perfect the soul. It's to move towards perfection. And the beauty of this path is if you don't complete it in this life, Allah will complete it in the next life. If you set out to memorize the Qur'an, and you're consistent in it, if you don't memorize it, by the time you die, the, an angel comes and teaches you it in the grave, and you'll be raised with the hafal. Actions are by intentions. So people should at least be intending and working to do these things. Whoever memorizes 40 hadith in the weak hadith, this is a weak hadith, but if they memorize it, they're raised up with the scholars on the Day of Judgment. That's not an insignificant thing. That's why Imam Nawawi made those 40 hadith to facilitate for people that, then that's himma. You should want to be amongst those people. And then he says, you punish yourself in order to stop it from going back and returning to something like that, one of those disobedience. And then, ثُمَّ And then go back to making the condition, being vigilant about it, and then guarding. So, you're, you're, you're guarding this, more, this vigilant awareness. And then you test yourself with reckoning. You take yourself to account. Muhasaba is something, and the Christians do that. It's something monks do. Uh, even Omar saw a monk who had two bags. One had black stones and the other had white stones. And he would put, he saw him once putting black stones in and white stones. And he asked him what he was doing. And he said he was taking himself to account for that day to see how many good deeds he'd done and how many bad deeds. The black stones were bad deeds. The white stones were good deeds. And then he would count and see which one outweighed the other as a way of reckoning, taking himself to account.